Hi everyone. In the part one of sterilization, we learn about dry heat physical sterilization. And in this part, we are going to discuss about moist heat sterilization. Now, let's have a quick uh, review of the physical sterilization methods once again. So, as I told you, the sterilization is defined as a complete elimination or killing of all microorganisms including the spores and making the material free from them is going to be considered as sterilization. And this sterilization is going to be classified into how many types or differentiated into how many types? Two types. So what are those two types? One is the physical methods of sterilization and the one is the chemical methods of sterilization. Now this physical methods of sterilization is again going to be of for different types that is sunlight, drying, heat and in the heat we had two types dry heat and moist heat. So the sunlight, drying, heat and the dry heat up to here we have discussed or learned in the first part and in this part we are going to learn about the moist heat sterilization. Okay and in the coming parts we will discuss about the filtration, radiation, and the chemical methods of sterilization. So whatever it may be, the ultimate goal of this microbial control by a way of sterilization is not allowing the micro harmful microorganisms to act, cause the undesirable consequences. That is the main ultimate goal of our microbial control by using this sterilization. So now uh, have a just a quick review of this physical methods of sterilization. So this sunlight we have discussed in the part one and then the flaming also we had gone through it isn't it? These are all the types of dry heat and then this is where we are going to discuss in this part is about the moist heat sterilization. This is a figure of uh, autoclave okay and then filtration in the coming parts we will discuss about the filtration methods. Okay, next coming to the overall uh, flowchart of physical methods of sterilization. So this is what. So here the physical methods as I told you heat, radiation, filtration. The dry heat is going to be of different types, red heart, flaming, uh, then incineration, hot air oven. And then this is the place where we are going to learn now is moist heat sterilization. Okay, so let's get into it. So moist heat sterilization is also called as steam heat sterilization that means the steam the water when converts into the vapor condition these are going to be called as a steam or then we call it as a steam and that steam is being used in the sterilization process called as moist heat sterilization so this moist heat sterilization or heat has a higher penetrating capacity when compared to our dry heat okay so that's why when uh, the this moist heat is going to have the more impact on the cell to damage rather than the dry heat the heat in the form of saturated steam under pressure is the most practical method of sterilization so of all the types uh, where we are going to have the saturated steam under pressure is going to be the most practical method the best example is our autoclave so now this moist heat is going to kill the microorganisms uh, like uh, coagulating and denaturating their enzymes and the structure of protein. So that's the basic principle behind this moist heat sterilization. And what are the various methods of uh, moist heat sterilization? Let's look into it. So we are going to have the various methods of uh, moist heat sterilization. They are temperature below 100 degrees centigrade example is a pasteurization. Temperature 800 degrees centigrade example is a boiling of water or tindalization. Temperature above 100 degrees is going to be of a autoclaving or pressure cooker. Autoclaving is nothing but the sterilization technique that is being uh, done with the help of an autoclave is called as uh, autoclaving. So we'll discuss all these things in detail. So let's come to the first method that is temperature below 100 degrees centigrade. Okay, so here are the figures. So here you can see this is the pasteurization of the milk that is occurring in a dairy industry below 100 degrees and here is a chindalization equipment okay where the water is going to be used at the 800 degrees temperature and this is our autoclave okay which is used uh, above 100 degrees temperature so now let's see the first one temperature below 100 degrees centigrade as i told you example is the pasteurization and this was developed by mr 
Louis Pasha, the great scientist. And this method is used to sterilize even fruit juices, beer, wine, milk, etc. And the pasteurization can be done uh, in different methods and few of them are like this. So low temperature holding method. So the temperature will be low and the time will be high. So for example, take 62.8 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes you are supposed to. The best example is our pasteurization of the milk at home even. And then high temperature short time method. So that means you are going to have a very high temperature, very short method. So the products are going to be held at 72 degrees centigrade but it's the time is only 15 seconds of time. Okay, then coming to another one, ultra high temperature. Here the temperature is 141 degrees centigrade for 2 seconds. And this method employs temperature above 100 degrees centigrade, but the time is very less. And this is also going to be called as a flash, okay, flash type of uh, holding temperature method. So these are all the uh, different methods that we follow in the pasteurization of different products. Then come in the next one, temperature at 100 degrees centigrade, examples or boiling of water and tindalization. So coming to the first one, boiling of the water. So this is the most uh, ancient method that we are uh, using uh, for the sterilization of our water. Okay, And what this boiling of water is doing is, it kills the vegetative forms of uh, all bacterial pathogens and uh, almost all viruses are fungi including the spores within 10 minutes usually much faster but most vegetative bacteria will die within 5 to 10 when immersed in boiling water but some spores will survive at this temperature for several hours okay so articles sterilized by this method cannot be stored for a long time so that's uh, one of the drawback of it so immediately they will be harbored by different microorganisms once they get get into the normal temperature so that's the drawback of this boiling of water and then coming to the second type of uh, this one is tindalization so here the tindalization this method of sterilization was de developed by mr john tinder in the 19th century for sterilizing substances to kill even the spores of bacteria okay in this method uh, the substances are going to be exposed to a temperature of about 90 to 100 degrees centigrade for 20 to 30 minutes for three consecutive days that's very important so today uh, for 100 at 100 degrees centigrade for 20 to 30 minutes and again they are left like that and again tomorrow you are going to do the same procedure and then on the third day also you are going to do this one so this kind of the process uh, making the spores to germinate when the temperature comes to normal temp normal the spores will germinate of thinking that uh, it's a very nutritious food. So when the spores are going to be germinate, they become the vegetative cells. On the next day, at this temperature, all the vegetative cells will be dead. So if so, any spores are left over, again, they are going to grow on the second day and that those are going to be killed by the third day heating. So that's how Tinder, that is John Tinder, by applying of uh, uh, this consecutive three days of uh, heating made uh, it very clear uh, that the spores can be eliminated at 100 degrees centigrade but for three consecutive days of uh, heating and this method is especially used uh, in the some sort of uh, heat sensitive uh, things like uh, serum okay so he mainly sterilizes the serum by using this uh, tindalization technique so tindalization is also called as fractional sterilization because we are using the uh, sterilization in a fractional manner of for three consecutive days or intermittent boiling. So boiling means at 100 degrees we are applying. So obviously it is boiling but intermittent boiling is occurring. So this is how the temperature at 100 degrees is going to be applied in the process of sterilization. Then what is the third method? That is the temperature above 100 degrees centigrade. So here you can see the figure where this is the lid and here is our uh, substance that is going to uh, be sterilized and here is the water and perforated shelf and metal. This whole thing is going to be the Tyndall equipment. Okay, So the first today we are going to heat it and we will stop it again. We will leave like that and the second day again we will heat it and third day also we will do it. Okay. So next the third one is temperature above 100 degrees centigrade. The examples are autoclaving and pressure cooker okay so here uh, coming to the first one autoclaving which is also called as a steam under pressure 
So moist heat sterilization can be carried out at a temperature above 100 degrees in order to destroy the bacterial endospores even. This requires the use of saturated steam under pressure, I told you. So this is achieved by an equipment called as autoclave. That's why this is called as autoclaving. This method was developed by Mr. Chamber Lang. Okay. So coming to this autoclave, so this is how the autoclave looks like in the laboratory. We have different types. So this is one of the vertical type of uh, autoclave. So here I will discuss about the structure of everything. So here uh, you are going to have a pressure gauge which is indicating our pressure and these are all the walls okay so that we'll discuss in detail now. So here comes the structure of autoclave so see the structure. So this is a double jacket steam uh, chamber okay the cylinder is made of a gun metal or stainless steel as I showed you before. There is a lid which is covering at the top. And that lid is going to be uh, equipped with an exhaust, that means the pressure how to be exhausted. And uh, you are to push out the A steam and a safety wall to blow excessive pressure out. And the screw goes to tighten the thing and a pressure gauge as I told you to indicate the pressure. Okay. Now this whole autoclave is going to be operated by the, by the obviously by gas or electricity. Now coming to the principle how it is going to work working mechanism or principle it works on the principle of saturated steam under pressure as i told you the pressure built inside the vessel once you are going to switch on the water gets boiled and the steam is going to be raised and it creates some sort of a pressure okay the pressure built inside the vessel increases the temperature of water and vaporizes into the steam at a temperature above 100 degrees centigrade and this is whole thing is going to be maintained at 121 degrees centigrade to 15 LBs pressure for about 15 minutes. We don't know the temperature inside but those are all being calculated uh, priorly. So if your pressure gauge is indicating the 15 LBs pressure that obviously indicates the pressure uh, the temperature inside is uh, 121 degrees centigrade and after once your pressure gauge is showing the 15 LBs pressure you are supposed to note down the time from then up to 15 minutes to 20 minutes. Now the, uh, this household pressure cooker also works on the same principle that means whatever the cookers that we are using at home is also going to have the same principle mechanism. Okay, uh, This uh, heat mainly uh, killing the microorganism by coagulating their proteins so that's what I told you. Then how it is going to work? Once the articles are kept in a basket, so this is the basket, okay. So your articles were kept with the holes for the easy circulation of the steam inside. Water in the autoclave is boiled to produce the steam. Now the initial steam was forced out until the chamber is filled with saturated steam and then exhaust is closed. Now you are going to close the exhaust. Then the hot saturated steam continues to enter in the chamber until desired temperature and pressure are going to be occurring. So here your pressure gauge is showing. This equipment is operated at uh, how much pressure I told you? It's 15 LBs pressure. At what will be the temperature if 15 LBs pressure is there? Obviously 121 degrees centigrade. And for how much time we are supposed to have? 15 minutes. So that's how. And this autoclave equipment is operated at 15 LBs pressure at 121 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Okay, so this is all uh, about the uh, principle and working mechanism of an autoclave, which is uh, widely used in all the laboratories to sterilize the medias, all those things. Then, what is the use or advantage of having this uh, autoclave? So autoclaving is used in sterilizing or culture media in the microbiology laboratories and in the other uh, life science laboratories and some of the instruments, dressings and applicator solutions, all these things can be sterilized by using this autoclave and even syringes, transfusion equipment, para, uh, pharmaceutical products, aqueous solutions and numerous other items that can withstand this temperature and pressure can be used to sterilize by this method. Then what is the main disadvantage of it? Fats and oils cannot be sterilized by steam. Okay, and certain uh, ingredients used in the culture media such as sugar, growth factors, uh, maybe are decomposed by excessive heat used in the 
autoclave. So these are the few uh, disadvantages of this uh, autoclave. But the main advantage is it is faster in sterilization when compared to our dry heat sterilization by hot air vent. And one more example under this moist heat is pressure cooker. So this pressure cooker was first uh, invented by Dennis Pepine, okay, and these pressure cookers are also named as a steam digester or pressure canals or refers, etc. And pressure cookers are generally made of aluminium or stainless steel that we know. And what's the principle behind it? The same principle that we studied uh, in the autoclave that is steam under pressure, okay. And uh, this in the household, we are mainly using it for cooking our foot and a uh, this pressure cooker uh, is going to have some advantages that foods are cooked much faster by pressure cooking than by other methods the food is cooked above the boiling point of water killing bacteria and viruses and this pressure cookers are mainly used in the food industry isn't it for the major sterilization process and then finally coming to the sterilization control so what is the sterilization control so this control is going to show us whether our sterilization technique is uh, having the validate and determine the adequacy of steam so what it is going to do that is to ensure that potentially infectious agents are destroyed by adequate sterilization regime so whether we have done the potentially uh, potential uh, sterilization technique or not can be used by seeing the culture of this because this is a bacteria spores bacillus stereodermis okay so or we can have a sterilization control of uh, thermocouple couple brown's test or autoclave test so here this bacillus stereodermal fillus survives steam heat at 121 degrees centigrade for five minutes but it will be killed at 121 degrees centigrade for 13 minutes. So you can justify by just allowing whether the media contain this uh, bacillus uh, stereodermophilus in indicate that sterilization was not fulfilled with the temperature. If it is not going to be grown, so obviously you can say that the sterilization is validate and determine the adequacy of steam. In the same manner, I forgot to tell you about the steam control, uh, that is sterilization control in the dry heat. There we are going to use a bacillus subtilis. Here we are using the bacillus stereothermophilus. There we will use the bacillus subtilis uh, for the validity and determine the adequacy of uh, dry heat sterilization. Okay, so that's how we have completed the first type of uh, sterilization that is heat sterilization so we have two types dry heat and moist heat the dry heat in the first part and the moist heat sterilization in the second part okay we will continue the other types of uh, physical sterilization that is a uh, filtration and radiation in the coming parts thank you